everybody. Let's talk about this week's special feature. But first, let's talk about the other ways you can help uh, help and support us. Let's talk about likes, comments, and shares. YouTube, Facebook, like us, comment, share, share us with anybody you think might enjoy the content. Um, and you know, secondly, you can always look for our wider range uh, array of downstream outdoor products. Today's featured product would be honey straws. That's right, honey filled straws. We take straws, we seal them tight with our own raw natural honey. These are only currently available by contacting us directly. Um, we do custom orders on them. You, you contact us directly anytime to via Facebook, YouTube. Or our email at downstreamoutdoors814 at gmail.com. And without any further delay, let's talk about this week's episode. Hello everybody, on this week's episode, we are back with Bill Weaver. That's right, I finally got the old ma mountain man to come out of the woods for a little bit and sit down and have a talk with us. We're going to do a three-part series here real quick with Bill, and it's all about predator hunting. I have been wanting to get into predator hunting myself for a long time. Um, I know it's something Bill has done for a long time, and him and I have talked about doing videos about predator hunting for quite some time. So I was really pleased to get uh, Bill to come out and do this series. He brought along his friend, Tyler Reese, um, who is, you know, he's quite a bit younger than Bill, but he's pretty well versed in this uh, predator hunting thing. And uh, we're going to do part one right now. Part one, we're just basically talking about the equipment that they're going to be carrying in the field and, you know, things like that. So, with, take it away, Bill. Hello, and welcome to Downstream Outdoors. I'm Bill Weaver again, your host. Um, Paul's kind of going to do some uh, interviewing here. This is my hunting partner, Tyler Reese, again. And we're going to go over some of the basics of the tools that you need for... Um, hunting from bipods, tripods, guns, lights, and everything. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about when is the best time to go predator hunting. Obviously, um, tonight, we, we, with the, the video that we're going to film tonight, we're going after every kind of predator, including bobcat, coyote, fox, um, raccoon, everything, and I, I know we're going for fur, okay? When is the best time? When is your guys' favorite time to go hunting? Our favorite time to go hunting is um, kind of like in the twilight hours of either morning or night or in the dead of night from like 9 o'clock to like 3 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so basically what you're saying is from the time the sun, sun starts to set till the sun starts to come back up, you guys like to be out there hunting? Yes. yes. Okay, that's what we like to hear. Okay. Yes, it's like they're nocturnal. Okay. From they the, hunt. During the night, yeah, and sleep from, during the day, mainly. From the, how do you pronounce that? A cusp, a cusp. I can't pronounce it. The cusp. The, capustulate hours to the nighttime hours back to the capustulate hours. That's I can't a big pronounce word. it. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so obviously we're hunting at nighttime, and that requires some specialty gear. And and, and we're talking about lighting. It, it, mm -hmm. You don't use a standard white light, right? No. Nope. You, you right. guys have a particular style of lighting. You want to explain the lighting yes. and why we use this particular style of light? Like, as you see on our hats right here right now, we have scan lights. These are red lights. I don't know if you can see that or... If which Tyler shining on me you can see that um, these are red lights now some guys like to use green lights some guys I prefer red lights green lights are more for hog hunting that's what they were designed for to hunt hogs in the south red lights are really what you want for predators we also have a gun mounted red light if you can see this right here right attached to my scope and just with a click of a switch it's on okay um, now why do why do we only want to use red lights though red lights don't spook the animal the foxes and coyotes and bobcats they're colorblind really they can't see red so that's what causes them to come in Okay. And, and one nice part about using the red light, when you're out there scanning with your red light on, 
whenever you hit the animal, their eyes shine out like beacons. You can instantly tell that you got an animal coming in. Okay, great. Now, Bill, you're got an arm loaded things here. What, what do you yep. got going on here with the, in your arms here? Some guys like to use tripods to hunt with. Now, my tr tripod, as you can see, is really big. I don't know if you can see the top of it. It only has one single yoke to hold my gun. Um, some guys use tripods that have a yoke that hold both, end of the, both ends of their guns from the front to the butt of the gun. But really, what I like to use is a bipod. It's light. It's easy to get in and out. You can rest your gun and have a steady rest. You have a good yoke to set your gun in and it's also you can move it back and forth with no problems and be able to scan and whenever the animal comes in you can turn to that section and shoot. Okay great now you said about you know using your firearms what particular type of firearms can we expect to, to for, for you guys to be using when you're out there hunting? Me particularly I use anything from a 22 Hornet I use I use anything from a 22 Hornet to this right here is a 17 Hornet. Um, you can use a 17 HMR. You can use like Tyler uses is a 204 Ruger. We can use um, shotguns, which is really good for close range, especially for gray fox or coyotes in tight situations. You can get a coyote to come in, you can hit them with a shotgun. Um, 12 gauge with like a BB shot is really well, is really good. Um, but I particularly like the 204 or 204, the 17 Hornet or the 22 Hornet for long range shots because sometimes the animal comes in, sits down, and doesn't want to come in. Okay, great. Um, really looking forward to getting you guys out there hunting. Um, anything else you'd like to add? Maybe some tips, some tricks that you, you haven't shared yet? Let's go back. Um, the other uh, type of gun that you can use is a 22-250 or a um, .223. Um, .223 doesn't do too much pelt damage. If, you're, if you want to keep the pelt, um, 223 is a really good round 17 Hornet, 22 Hornet, like I said. Um, but once you get into like 22, 250 or anything bigger than that, sometimes you get a really big hole in your pelt and it's not worth keeping. Okay. okay. Any other tips or tricks that you might want to add um, that we're not, we haven't discussed in any of the episodes yet? One nice thing to do is if you know you're going to be predator hunting in certain areas, it's also really nice to go out and do some pre-scouting in the field that you know you're going to be hunting throughout the year and just mapping out the ranges because at night it gets really difficult to tell what your range is. With the red light it kind of makes your distance seem a little funky where you think something's actually closer than what it is or further than what it is. So it's nice to go out there before season do all your scouting and looking around to see if there's any predator sign and see what your ranges are for where you're going to be shooting. Uh, that sounds like great advice. Um, I can see where that definitely could be a problem at nighttime using red light judging your distances. Um, and so it does help to know your surroundings. Any other advice you'd want to give? Um, always, whenever you're walking into a stand or walking out, always be scanning with your red light. Because sometimes you'll be walking in and they're already down there in the field mousing after mice or whatever it could be in the field. So I've walked in the field and or a fox was sitting there eating a rabbit. Real yep. easy for me to take them. It wasn't hard. From the time me and Tyler get out of the truck till the time we set up and we're calling, we have our red lights on and we're scanning. So you guys turn your red lights off whenever you're calling, or they just stay on the whole they time? Stay you're on stay on the whole, whole time. Because you're constantly glassing out there, looking for them eyes to yep. pop out uh, of the, the, the fence rows and such like mm -hmm. that. Okay, and great. with our gun lights, the ones that are mounted on our guns, 
we only turn those on whenever a fox is in distance or a coyote or whatever and that's whenever we turn those on they're a little bit brighter they kind of spook the animal whenever you turn them on because it's brighter than what our scan lights are like Tyler's holding and like I'm holding they're a little bit brighter and they kind of make the fox go whoo what's that they can't see the red but they can see the brightness, the brightness. okay fair enough fair enough um, sounds great guys would you like to close us out of here Bill yep um, so if you're going out predator hunting or you're going out trapping tight chains and we'll see you all later that was a great episode I really enjoyed it they're just going to keep getting better check out next week's episode next week we're going to talk about predator calling between mouth calls electronic calls all kinds of calls um, I want to reaffirm something that Tyler touched on there at the end about scouting out your territory one it is great practice not only for what Tyler said about range finding but it's also great safe hunting technique why because you can get out there and see what's behind your shot you don't have to worry whenever you come in there in the dark is there a house back there is there a shed back there is there something back there that if my bullet doesn't stop is it going to strike that whereas if we go in daylight we scout out our areas well ahead of time we use mapping such as Google mapping and such like that it'll help us a lot to lay out a plan of approach for when we go into a field predator hunting at night so join us next week and until next time keep your line wet and out of the trees <laughs>